Hey, welcome to another video. It's, it's been a few months since I've done my last video, uh, but I thought I've seen well, I've seen some comments coming up on some of the videos which I've posted in the past, and I thought I'd address a couple of those issues. Uh, also, some of the questions which, which people uh, are asking on it. A lot of it seems to be focused mostly on the early stages. So, a lot of the messages I get, a lot of comments I get in in the description uh, in the in the videos, is people who have. Um, just gone through the procedure in the last couple of days or in the last couple of weeks and um, they're asking questions about what is what, what can you expect um, well in, in summary uh, I'll just snapshot right now I'm now nine months post the operation and everything is is very healed and um, no issues no problems at all so as I have said in the past things do get better it just takes time um, but yeah first two weeks what what, what can you expect uh, I'll be brutally honest with you, the first two weeks are pretty bad. Um, not horrendous, um, don't think that you're going to be um, stuck on your sofa, won't be able to go anywhere, uh, or stuck in bed, you're going to be in all kinds of pain and you're just going to be unbearable, but it's nothing like that at all. It is bearable, it's just very uncomfortable. Uh, so a couple of things to, to expect um, in the first few days really after the operation. Now, the operation itself, uh, isn't painful at all. It's just very uncomfortable. The uh, anaesthetic is the worst part. After anaesthetic is done, you don't actually feel anything. It's all okay. Following day, again, isn't so bad. The anaesthetic um, sort of numbs the pain, but that does lead you, or certainly led me into a bit of false sense, uh, sense of false security, really. Um, so yeah, so once anaesthetic does wear off, the bandages are on. Uh, you can expect you will not be able to go toilet as normal straight away. While your bandage is on, the best way to go toilet would be sitting down and your surgeon will tell you that. Reason for that is that you don't really want to get urine on your bandages when you're trying to go toilet. Um, for obvious reasons, you want to minimize any form of um, possible infection or anything like those lines. Um, so yeah, the first couple of days, uh, the pain does set in. Um, so you do feel, I feel the worst bit is the nighttime erections where when you do have your bandages on, when you have an erection at night, those bandages are going to get very tight. It's going to be very uncomfortable and it certainly will wake you up. Now, the worst bit really came, uh, for me and certainly from what I've seen from other people's comments is when the bandages do come off. Um, so the bandages are recommended to come off after about two days or so. I mean, some people do take them off earlier. I was advised to take them off the two year, two days, two to three days. Um, the reason for leaving it on site longer is if you, you know, you've got trauma down there and the idea is to compress it. So it keeps everything from, you know, ballooning out effectively. So when they do come off, get them off again this is something which is another thing which gets brought up is it going to be painful to remove the bandages now depends on your surgeon depends how it's put on but for me it was pretty straightforward uh the way i went around it was i soaked it got it a little bit wet in the not in the bath in the shower just what well, not shower just sort of use a bit of water on there soak the bandages off and sort of un, un unwrapped it um now, the fear I was thinking, a lot of people would think, is it going to be stuck with blood on you and it's going to be one of those horrible tear, tearing effects? Luckily for me, it wasn't. It wasn't so bad. But um, I, I think I built it up in my head more than anything else. So, yeah, when the bandages come off, this is when the pain really starts changing, uh, which I mentioned earlier. And this is the bit which is the most uncomfortable part as well. So what you'll be um, experiencing at this point is... Um, there, there will you will obviously see the operation and what it looks like afterwards but you'll see there'll be a lot of dry blood and um it certainly doesn't look that pretty at this stage now this this is the bit which uh, you know this this is the stage in the first few weeks where um you have to take things easy um you do ideally need to take a couple of weeks off work um I certainly would try to minimize movements in terms of walking around too much and certainly not wearing too tight clothes and certainly wearing looser uh, fitting things. Um, the big key to it is the sensitivity side where this varies from person to person and depends on the, the reason why you had the operation in the first instance. If it was due to some people having a tight foreskin where uh, the glands wasn't exposed very often, you're going to have hypersensitivity. It's going to be very sensitive. 
if it was some other reason, some other medical reason, uh, but you had no issue with retracting the foreskin, then your sensitivity might be all right and you'd be completely fine with um, things touching the glands, the exposed glands, so your boxers and various things like that, your bed sheets. Uh, so let's just assume on, we'll, we'll work on, you know, most of the people have this operation due to things like tight foreskins. Let's, let's just assume that is the situation. Now, you're going to have a very sensitive gland and this is where it's going to become very, very, um, not painful, but very uncomfortable. Uh, so when you're trying to sleep at night, I, you, when you're sleeping with bed sheets on, I would recommend, definitely recommend using a very light sheet. Um, don't wear, uh, don't have a big duvet on, so don't have a, you know, a thick duvet because the weight on there is going to be very uncomfortable. I'd also recommend in the first few days to um, maybe put a towel down in your bed so when you're sleeping, your likelihood is that you will get your nighttime erections and what I had, the situation I had with that was it pulled on the on the stitches and it caused bleeding. Um, first couple of days were a fair amount. It looks horrendous. You think, oh my God, what's gone on here? Something's gone completely wrong, but it is completely normal and this will happen. It's just where the skin is, here, is being pulled on those stitches and it's painful. It is painful. It's that sharp stabbing pain. It's not pleasurable. Um, so the first few weeks, expect you're gonna have disrupted sleep. The only way around that uh, is to minimize the nighttime erections is to actually uh, li um, take little water on board, little drink on board, and try not to drink a couple of hours before you go to bed and try not and not drink throughout the night. Uh, nighttime erections caused by a variety of things, but one of the reasons is because you need to go to the toilet. Um, it's your, it's like your body almost telling you, saying that, hey, my bladder's full, I need to go, so you get a, an erection. And to minimise that, I say, is, is to not take on as much water, and that might help that. Um, over the course of the weeks, it does get better. So as the skin stretches and starts healing, um, these night directions do get more comfortable and not so bad and certainly after the stitches have come out uh, two to three weeks after it's not as bad anymore night time directions aren't as bad the sensitivity is, is the key part there that does remain for some time um, certainly three to four weeks and it's uh, longer for some people um, so that moves on to that part which is um, to the night time erections, the bleeding, yes, that will happen in the next few days and the first few weeks are gonna be uncomfortable to try and sleep. So this is why I'd recommend taking a couple of weeks off work to try and, um, you know, the last thing you wanna be going is trying to do some work where you're half asleep, depending on your job. Um, the other thing as well in the first two weeks is to um, not minimize moving about so much, but certainly try not to be doing things excessive. So obviously running, um, sports, anything like that just minimize all that try not to do that they will quote you saying for the first six weeks do not do anything like that um first couple of weeks yeah i completely agree with that after that it really comes down to personally comes down to how you feel uh and how you're feeling in that area and whether or not you're experiencing pain or uncomfortableness or anything like that you will the way to get around the sensitivity is time there is no quick sure answer to that there is time um what you what i would suggest doing is if it is sensitive is to put l light touches so if you are wearing um pajamas to bed or round round the flat or anything like that wear joggers uh, or wear pajama bottoms or something like that just so very light not so not jeans where it's rubbing hard on it because it will be very uncomfortable um if you do have to go out and about um then wear tight briefs or tight boxes it stops the movement and it helps just the glands touch the cloth or material, which does after a while start helping it, I suppose, harden it up, I suppose is the best way of putting it, um, where it desensitizes it and it gets a lot less sensitive. Um, but yeah, so I fully expect the first few weeks is going to be very uncomfortable in terms of sensitivity and that does take longer. That for me personally, it took, uh, a couple of months really before it really started coming along noticeable you know give it now it's nine months down the line now and it's as, as i've said before it's as if it's always been like that now it's not really an issue there is some times uh where you do feel the difference 
Um, I would probably say in terms of temperatures, so in showers and things like that, you do feel the temperature more, but I suppose that's because it's more exposed and, and things. So um, other things to take into consideration, uh, yeah, painkillers, uh, definitely loads of those. Get some painkillers, ibuprofen, pyrocetamols, that does help, and that does numb the, uh, does help the numb the pain that you might be prescribed, I was prescribed antibiotics as well to ensure um, there's no infections or any risk for infections. So yeah, make sure you do take those. Uh, baths, showers, that's another question. Uh, first two, three days, it's recommended do not have a bath because um, so, you want to minimize any infections um, in your circumcised area. So you don't want to uh, dip it fully underwater and you certainly do not want to be using any sort of form of shower gels or anything like that because you want to minimize all the you know you've gone through this procedure and the last thing you want to do is cause any problems and have to go back and have something else done <laughs> you know you want to minimize that chance so first few days uh it's minimal exposure to baths and showers uh after you know, three or four days you find to start taking showers just be careful not to put direct water directly on there it will be slightly uncomfortable and probably not recommend it but after about a week or so you, you should be back to normal showers and fine and in terms of bath if you're a bathing type of person a couple of weeks or so and you'll be fine for that um, just take uh, it's just take time these things do take time and the first two weeks do feel like forever but it does get better and um, it's just stay with it um, other things to mention in the first couple of weeks um, I think someone's people do mention things about masturbation. I mean, if you know, you just had a major. Well, I, I thought it was a pretty major operation on on a very sensitive area. It's the last thing that was on my mind. To be honest with you, um, as to whether or not I can masturbate, have sex in the first two weeks, it's something which was not even entering my mind, and I would urge not even trying that in the first few weeks. Wait until it's healed. Wait until things are better before even engaging on on something like that. One thing that does come up, um, I just remembered, is you will likely have um, lumps, weird sort of lumps under the skin, which do feel a little bit alien and are a bit concerning. Nothing to be worried about. These are normal. What it is is where they've um, cut the veins and they've used some uh, heat to um, stop it bleeding. And uh, what it is is the blood still going to those veins and it's got nowhere to go, so it builds up, and it has to work out that actually there is nowhere for it to go, it has to go back into the body again. Um, that's completely normal. Um, takes, took me about three to four weeks for that to subside, and come, and the, for those lumps to go away, but it, it's one of those things, it does take the time. Uh, lastly, stitches. Uh, yeah, the stitches are uncomfortable, as I've mentioned, for the first few weeks. They start falling off, or they did for me after about two weeks. After two weeks, they start coming out, depending on the type of circumcision you had. Um, don't pull at them. Don't try and cut them. Don't try to do anything like that. Just let it happen naturally. The risk you have if you try to, you know, pull it out, one, it's going to be very sore. Um, two, you might cause scarring, which you don't need. And that's something which, um, you know, you want to minimise as well, because there will be a scar at the end of it. Uh, and there are ways to minimise that side of things using things like bio oil, which I've mentioned in previous videos as well. So yeah, so that's kind of um, my view on the first few weeks, which you, you know don't be fooled to think it's going to be a pleasurable experience. Well, certainly not pleasurable, but it's an easy experience. It is tough, uh, but bear with it. It does get better. Um, it's time is a healer, and in this case, it's it's very true. So yeah, so I hope that helps answer some some questions uh, which get answered, uh, gets asked for what happens or what to expect in the first few weeks. Um, but yeah, as always, any comments uh, or any other questions you want answering or want me to do a video on there, please do let bite the blow, and I will do my best um, to try and pick up the videos a little bit more often than every couple of months and try and do them as often as I can uh, to hopefully help everybody who's or anybody who's going through this. This is the whole point of these videos is to make people aware of the situation and what to expect and to hopefully give some form of positivity that it's tough, it's horrible, but it gets better. And uh, Don't read too much online about the horror stories and things like that. It's not as bad as, as it's made out to be. I think there are, you know, some people out there like to exaggerate or, or such, but I can't comment for everybody and everybody goes through a different experience, but 
um, from my experience, nine months down the line, it's perfectly fine and it's all, it's all okay now. I don't even think about it, to be honest, anymore. Um, so, yeah. So, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.